Good morning. We're out for a ramble before work. Taking the scenic route this morning, so I thought now would be a great opportunity to talk about game engines. So this is what I'm going to call a ramble cast. I'm out rambling and I have no idea what I'm going to talk about other than game engines. My first idea for uh, game engines is going to be what game engine I'm going to be using. Like At the moment I'm using Stencil and it's a, it's a very good engine and it is 2D based. has some nice features but I'm not overly sure about long term support. So I'm looking at something new, a bit fresh and uh, I'm not quite sure what to, uh, to go with. I've got a few ideas so, and they're a very short list. So the first thing is, do I want to use a 3D engine? Um, so two obvious ones are going to be Unity 3D uh, and Unreal. Uh, I know there are tons of other stuff, but from a pure ease of use, getting in there and learning, Unity and Unreal are pretty much the only choice. They're also the only choice that I can see that is multi-platform targeted and multi-platform editing, which means I want to be able to create this on any platform and deliver to any platform, which is kind of important. James predominantly uses a IBM PC compatible, which means a Windows machine. I use mostly Macintosh computers. And you can hate me for that, but it's what I use. The question is, do I want to be using a 3D engine? Now, obviously, generally, maybe not. I don't want to be doing 3D. 3D is complicated. It's a bit harder on the old head. Uh, and it's a bit harder on old James and it requires potentially other people to get involved. Uh, I want this simple, so the simplest thing to do is go for a 2D based engine. 3D has got this reputation of being really cheap on the graphics, but I would argue not. Um, it requires very specific skills and it requires very specific head thinkings. Um, whereas 2D, open up any program, splurge off and off you go. 3D on the other hand requires more thought, so I'm thinking not, but I can use 2D in the 3D program. So I know Unity has a lot of 2D applicable things as does Unreal. The question is do I want to get knee deep in 3D engines on 2D planes? And the easiest answer is no I don't, um, uh, not yet anyway. I have a finite amount of time to spend on this project and I don't really want to be spending it battling 3D engines. So the question is specifically which 2D engine? Now at the moment I'm using a 2D engine myself for a uh, kitchen and that's Stencil but I'm not sure if Stencil's really up to this task. I had a few issues with uh, updating uh, and a few technical issues. Um, but haven't been actively responded to by the developers of Stencil and I know it's like only a several man army and stuff um, and Stencil doesn't have the real features for a point and click adventure game I'm looking for uh, such as dynamic layering um, without a whole lot of work so I'm thinking about looking at other engines which may be a complete fool's errand considering this is a new project but I'm actively looking for something else other than Stencil now I may return to Stencil in the future, I've invested a lot of time and effort into it. It's a nice engine, very easy to use, but right now I can't do the heavy lifting I want to. So I know there are a ton of 2D stuff out there, um, but which one specifically do I want to look at? Now, I've already established I want cross-platform editing, cross-platform targeting amongst most desktop machines. I'm not looking for mobile, I'm not looking for any weird esoteric console, I'm not looking for anything weird. Uh, I'm just looking for uh, Windows, Mac and Linux. So I've already been looking and out of everything there's two engines that I like the look of. Um, they might be quite easy to use uh, and they're very, they're very different. Um, so there's a ton of engines out there. I'm not bothered about paying for stuff. I'd rather pay for a good product than try and skimp around a free product. Um, and there's an absolute ton of them out there uh, and, and you can get yourself all worked up and turned around just looking at all the different types of products and seeing what they they do and stuff but two stand out uh, the first one is Godot or Godot Godot? 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 
I have no idea how to pronounce it. It's a 2D and 3D engine, which I know what I've just previously said about 3D, but it has an add-on that's specifically for point-and-click adventure games. And the Godot engine has uh, been used uh, in an existing adventure game, uh, Doug Mendoza Pizza Boy. Uh, I like the look of Godot. Godot? Godot? Um, seems easy to learn, it's extensible, it's got a nice, uh, nice facility for scripting. Uh, so that might actually fit the bill, and considering it's already done a really established point-and-click adventure game, it seems perfect for a piddly, piddly old piss-pot game like uh, Life Cycle. So Godot is free, which isn't a massive concern, but it's a, a nice little benefit to have. Um, the other option is a paid-for program called Visionaire Studio, and I really like the look of this. It's about 40-50 euros, which is about 40-45 quid. Uh, and it's actually built, purpose-built for point-and-click adventure games. There's a ton of adventure games out there that this thing has powered. Uh, and it's got a whole heap of stuff I really like the look of. And it's got an extensible uh, scripting language, which is uh, interesting, to say the least. So Visionaire Studio seems well up to the task. Um, and I do like the look of it. So now it's a choice between Visionaire Studio and Godot. Godot? Godot. Um, my immediate thoughts are that, although Godot has this uh, extension that handles point-and-click adventure games, it's not deliberately built for it, whereas Visionaire is deliberately built for point-and-click adventure games, which possibly makes it the better option. Godot itself is going through a major overhaul at the moment, and the main head is currently unstable. Uh, they're replacing a huge amount of technology in there, and I think in the next 6 to 12 months, Godot, 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 will be hugely powerful. Uh, and it might actually be worth revisiting that engine at a later date for another project. Um, I have downloaded both of them and had had a look, and I think Visionaire's interface is a bit quirky. Um, doesn't have standard Mac-like interfaces, uh, but it is very, very good. And I think, from what I've seen and what I've messed around with on both of them, uh, I'm going to probably opt for Visionaire Studio. Yeah. Uh, that, the extension that Godot has, Godot, Godot, is uh, largely unsupported, as it were. And I'm worried that in the future, further development might break that, and I'll be left high and dry, having to figure everything out myself, which is not too much of a problem, but I'd rather be working on building the game itself rather than trying to figure out the technology, which is how I approach pretty much everything to do with computers. I'm not bothered about tinkering. I don't want to tinker. I want to produce. Um, which seems like a hipster thing to say, but it's the truth. So yeah, Visionaire Studio, I think that's the one. So, I think that wraps up today's little short little ramble cast. When I started this, I sort of had an idea of which engine I'd go for, but just sort of like vocalising and explaining to uh, pretty much no one out there has helped. Anyway, thanks for taking the time out to watch. Enjoy me on my morning walk. This is the scenic route, it takes a little extra, but. I like it, you've got a canal in the background, you've got disused old buildings in that background, and you've got the bright lights and big city of Rotherham. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again next week, and hopefully I'll have something uh, more to show you, because James has been beavering. See you later. That doesn't look suspicious, does it?